What theory did John Deaton put forward? How relevant is it? How will this theory affect the trial? We will answer these questions in today's video. According to X, attorney and Evernode Exerpol co-founder Scott Chamberlain, neither the SEC nor the XRP community seem to have benefited by the current verdict. Chamberlain's remarks followed a recent decision by Judge Annalisa Torres, who granted and denied portions of both sides' applications in equal proportion. Expert testimony is essential for Ripple and the SEC to back up their statements and proof about excerpting. As the court approved and rejected sections of both sides' motions, neither the SEC nor the excerpt community seems to have benefited from this decision. One of the most important effects of the decision was the exclusion of Patrick Duty the key expert witness. The SEC had hired this business to look into investors' expectations for XRP. Another unintended result of the Dalbert issues was that SEC lawyers tried to have Judge Torres exclude John E. Deaton, an XRP community attorney, from participating in the litigation, in part because Deaton had revealed the identity of the sexy expert witness. The judge, however, did not prohibit Deaton but instead agreed with him that duty should not testify in court on behalf of XRP holders. Similar views were expressed by XRP community attorney Jeremy Hogan, who said that the sex must show that investors had a reasonable expectation of benefit from Ripple's efforts, and that duty was critical in demonstrating this. While the judge ruled in favor of the sex on expert witness number three, which Ripple had deemed irrelevant and unreasonably prejudicial, Hogan believes that expert E3's opinion as to Ripple's incentives and actions to influence the extra price is relevant to the issue of reasonable expectation of profits, yet he considers it weak sauce, a meaning that it will be ineffective in this circumstance. According to attorney John E. Deaton, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission made a serious error in identifying Ripple executives Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson in their enforcement case against Ripple Labs in a long Twitter thread yesterday, the crypto law founder sought to explain why Judge Annalisa Torres disregarded the sex's objections to Ripple expert testimony on the non-security status of XRP by other authorities. He said that these testimony addressed whether Ripple officials were imprudent in failing to recognize that XRP was a security. The sec you will need to show this, as previously stated by the attorney for the court to find the executives guilty of aiding and abetting the sale of an unregistered securities. The attorney said multiple times that several other government bodies, including the SEC, had considered excerpt as a non-security and that the agency had saddled itself with an unneeded burden. Deaton speculates that the regulator used this action to compel a settlement or to weaken Ripple's support in the young market. Yet, in his opinion, this was a significant blunder and the regulator will almost certainly lose on this point. The attorney representing 75,000 XRP holders in the dispute, as a friend of the court, has projected that the final decision in the legal struggle is imminent. No one anticipated that the creation of the XRP coin in 2012 would set off the SEC UVs. Ripple litigation, one of the most famous legal fights in blockchain history. Ripple was one of the biggest digital assets in the crypto industry before Ethereum was even a glimmer in VitalXI. For a long time, crypto news was dominated by the sex's case against Ripple. Crypto aficionados have gotten desensitized to the fight over time. The fate of ESRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the whole cryptocurrency industry hangs in the balance of the cease lawsuit. Ripple blockchain is a distributed digital payment system similar to Bitcoin. When it was first introduced in 2012, Ripple's primary goal was to facilitate the rapid and cheap international transfer of multiple fiat currencies. The SEC has filed a complaint against Ripple Labs and its CEO Brad Garlinghouse and co-founder Chris Larson. This is the official case that the XRP lawsuit refers to. In New York, the case is being presided over by Judge Annalisa Torres of the District Court. So what exactly are the SEC and its unmovable chairman Gary Jeansler charging Ripple with? Every day, dozens of individuals buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency tokens on secondary markets. Why should XRP be singled out for such heavy SEC regulation? In 2020, the SEC filed charges against Ripple Labs, alleging that the company had raised over US$1 billion via the sale of XRP coins, making it the largest regulatory case in the cryptocurrency sector to date. 
If you've been involved with cryptocurrencies for more than a week, you're undoubtedly aware that ecos like this are widespread. The SEX has a major problem with the sale of extra coins by Ripple Labs and its executives because, as they see it, these sales constituted unregistered securities offers. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, XRP is not a currency but a security, instead, making it subject to applicable securities regulations. According to the SEC, Ripple's CEO and co-founder were also less than forthright over the course of the transaction. They claim that Garlinghouse and Larson broke federal securities laws by making false and misleading claims regarding the XRP coin and by failing to formally register the transaction. In conclusion, Gensler LIG company assert that Ripple Labs had knowledge that XRP should be classified as a security but deliberately withheld that information from its investors. However, proponents of Ripple maintain that XRP is a money and not a security. Thus, it is exempt from regulation under federal securities laws. The XRP coin is not a security, under Ripple Labs definition. While XRP is a currency and not a security, Ripple denies the allegations made against them. Ripple claims that the sex incorrect classification of the XRP coin and the ESRP ESAL as an unregistered security sale are at the heart of the whole legal dispute. Ripple, to rub salt in the wound, asserts that the sex's contradictory approaches to cryptocurrency regulation stifle a dynamic and forward thinking sector. According to Deaton, he does not anticipate that Judge Torres will experience a major delay in rendering her decision about the summary judgment motions. Attorney John E. Deaton is of the opinion that a decision will soon be made on the complaint brought against Ripple by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. This information was made public in a tweet by the founder of CryptoLaw today in response to inquiries about whether the release of the judge's decision on Dalbert motions gives any hints on the timeline for her summary judgment decision. In his capacity as a friend of the case, the CryptoLaw founder represents thousands of excerpt holders. Deaton stated his uncertainty on the likelihood of severe holdups. The attorney said that the judge may hand down her decision as soon as tonight or it might not come until a few weeks from now. According to what has been published today, the judge's order on the Dalbert motion indicates that she partially allowed and partially declined requests from both parties to strike out expert evidence. As the report highlights, XRP holders were the biggest winners as a result of Judge Torres striking out expert opinions that the SEC used to support its claims that ARP gear holders purchased the token with reasonable expectations of profits solely from Ripple's efforts. XRP holders were the biggest winners as a result of Judge Torres striking out expert opinions that the SEC used to support its claims that XRP holders purchased the token. It is important to keep in mind that the counsel for the defendant in the case said that the decision about whether or not XRP is a security might take a further two months. According to what Ripple's general counsel Stuart Alderity said not so long ago, there are three possible possibilities. It is possible that the court will rule in favor of Ripple or the SEC, or it may decide to go to trial. Deaton has said that the clarification of the SEC's contention that sales of XRP on secondary markets represent unregistered securities offerings is the conclusion that he would most like to see the court reach. Even if Ripple is ultimately unsuccessful in the lower court, owners of XRP would still be able to claim a huge win if the judge rules against the SEC's position on this issue.